Sports betting degenerates, welcome back to the Buster Bookie Show. Today is Thursday, September 19th, going over college football week four in my top four plays. If this is your first time here, welcome to the Buster Bookie Show. We do here, we give you our expert predictions along with the opportunity to win some money with a $40 giveaway. If we sweep the card going 4-0, I'll cash up somebody 40 bucks. If you would like to qualify, all that you need to do, number one, subscribe to the channel. You have to be a subscriber. Number two, comment below, four and O, oh, give us the good vibes. And then number three, like the video. If you do all that and we sweep going four and O, oh, I will cash up somebody 40 bucks. We just did it on our Major League Baseball show yesterday, and uh, we will be doing it on our college football group show and NFL group show later on. But we've got four plays, $40 giveaway on this bad boy. Let's dive into our four plays for today. The first one we're going to talk about, this one's a big one. Illinois versus Nebraska. I'm seeing this at the current time of this video. Nebraska favored by eight and a half. Let's dive into this bad boy here. You've got a pair of undefeated teams uh, going to battle here. 24th ranked Illinois going against the 22nd ranked Nebraska. Illinois comes in off of a 30 to nine home victory over Central Michigan. They pushed in that one. They were 21 point favorites. Nebraska rolled 34 to three as they smashed northern iowa and they did cover that game they were 30 point favorites in that game now first let's talk about illinois and dig a little bit deeper into this team as i said they are currently 3-0 and on the year they're looking to go on the road now for the first time this season as they uh are going against a lot tougher opponent than what they faced against central michigan illinois drove 59 yards on 12 plays on their opening drive and they pretty much cruised from there they come into this game 73rd in the FBS in passing offense with 225.3 yards per game, and they are 73rd in rushing offense with 153.3 yards per game. 54th in the FBS in scoring offense as they average 32.7 points per game. They're led by Luke Altmeyer. He's 54 of 78 as far as his passing. He's thrown for 647, six touchdowns, no picks this year. Caden Fegan is the leading ground rusher for this team, leads them with 42 carries for 173 yards and three scores. So those are the main guys for Illinois. On the other hand, looking at this Nebraska team, they are, like I said, also 3-0 after smacking Northern Iowa. And, uh, you know, this is obviously a lot tougher game for them as well. Um, looking at some of the stats for them, they are 52nd in the nation in passing offense with 250 yards per game. 57th in the nation with 171.3 yards per contest when it comes to their rush game. Nebraska is 45th in the FBS in scoring offense with 34 points per game. They're led by Dylan Rayola. He's been very impressive. 57 of 80 for 670 yards and five touchdowns, only one pick. So they've got a very explosive quarterback here, and this is going to lead into our overall prediction here. Both teams have been very good in the opening three weeks. Illinois owns a win over Kansas uh, that was ranked at the time, while Nebraska smacked Colorado at home that same week. While the Fighting Illini have been solid, all three games have come at home, and this is going to be a lot tougher test here on the road. I think if Nebraska is able to take away Bryant and Franklin, forcing Altmaier to look elsewhere, it's tough to see the Fighting Illini uh, doing enough offensively to really hang in this game. Nebraska, I think, is going to have a really good year. I really like what I've seen out of their quarterback here. I think they win this game by 10 to 12 points. We're going to take Nebraska, minus 8.5, as our first play of the day. All right, play number two now. We're going to look at this Kansas versus West Virginia game. Currently, I've got Kansas as a two-point uh, dog here in this game. All right, let's dig into it here. When you talk about these two teams, First, let's talk about uh, Kansas. One and two straight up. 0 and three against the spread. They had a very disappointing 23 to 20 loss to UNLV last Friday. West Virginia, on the other hand, one and two straight up. They are also 0 and three against the spread. They lost 38 to 34 to Pittsburgh. And when you talk about this Kansas team, the big name that stands out is their quarterback, Jalen Daniels. He's a guy with some big time expectations this year, but he's had some struggles. You know, this team averages 28.3 points, 403 total yards per game, um, 164.3 passing yards. But the quarterback, although he's got star potential, he's been kind of loose with the ball. 
six interceptions so far. Their ground game is led by senior running back Devin Neal, who's carried the ball 45 times for 333 yards, 7.4 yards per carry, and two touchdowns. Their top receivers are Luke Grimm and Lawrence Arnold. Defensively, they allow 16.3 points, which is very solid, 43rd, and 246.7 total yards, which is 16th. So they are solid defensively, but their problem has been, uh, you know, Jalen Daniels just not taking care of the ball as much as he needs to. On the other side, West Virginia, they need a bounce back win here. Uh, they collapsed late on the road at Pittsburgh last week, blowing a 10 point lead with less than five minutes remaining. That's pretty demoralizing. They were three for 14 on third down and committed some very costly turnovers. This team averages 31.7 points and 399 total yards per game. Now, our prediction in this bad boy, I think it's going to be a very interesting game, but I like Kansas here on the road. I mentioned Jalen Daniels. I do think he has star potential. He showed some big-time flashes last year. I think he's now had some time to watch the film, see where his mistakes are, and really correct some of these turnovers here. But I think he is the best player playmaker in this game and you know talking more about Kansas you know their defense is very solid uh, especially on third down its opponents average just 1.5 red zone trips per game which is tied for the fourth fewest in the country so I think Kansas here is in a good situation we're gonna take Kansas here getting a few points give us Kansas plus two as our second play all right, play number three now. This one's a big, maybe one of the biggest games, if not the biggest. We're looking at USC going against Michigan. Michigan is a six-point dog at the time of this video. Going against USC, you've got the number 11-ranked USC, 2-0 straight up and 2-0 against the spread. Uh, they are going, traveling here, going to be a road game for them, going against number 18, Michigan, who is 2-1, but 0-3 against the spread. Now, when you talk about USC, obviously they lost Caleb Williams, but this team really has not missed a beat. You can make a case they might be better off, and I think a lot of it has to do with uh, Lincoln Riley, the uh, play caller on the offensive side for this team. Their quarterback, Miller Moss, has been very good. Uh, two weeks ago, Moss completed 21 of 30 for 229 and a touchdown as they smacked Utah State. Woody Marks rushed for 103 yards and a touchdown on 13 attempts, and Quentin Joyner added 84 rushing yards and two scores. The key for any Trojans team, though, is their play on defense. They shut out a bad Utah State team two weeks ago, and they held LSU to just 20 points in the opener. Now, talking about this Michigan team, they've got a lot of changes going on, starting with a new head coach. Obviously, Jim Harbaugh is gone. J.J. McCarthy was the quarterback last season. He was very good, but it's a new season now, and they are scrambling to figure out who their quarterback is going to be. Alex Orgy came on late in the game in their last game, threw for 12 yards and a touchdown, rushing for 27 yards on three attempts. The redshirt sophomore who reportedly runs a 4.34 40 will get the start over Warren in this game, and I think it is the right decision here. I like what I've seen out of him. I think he has the ability to run and make some plays with his legs as well. Um, so Michigan, you know, they're, they're a tough running team, and it should be, again, with Orgy as the quarterback. Uh, Khalil, Khalil Mullings, he leads the Wolverines with 153 rushing yards and two touchdowns. Overall, this offense ranks 105th overall with 329.3 yards per game while passing for just 153 yards, which is 120th. So they're hoping they can get more out of Orgy here. And uh, I do like his ability to at least run the ball. Hopefully that will open up some things as well. End of the day, you've got Michigan here at home, and USC is having to travel to a place that they're just not very familiar with playing in these type of environments. The Wolverines will get their running game going and use that physical style that the Trojans rarely saw, if ever, in the Pac-12. This is a you know proud program talking about Michigan. And I think they're going to be able to really show what they can do here at home. I think Michigan's tough front four, which is led by the very massive Mason Graham, an All-American, who's originally from Southern, Southern California, 
I think he's going to be able to get to Miller Moss and create some quicker throws, some possible interceptions, at least some uh, incomplete passes because of the uh, hurried throws. And uh, we're getting six points at home. I'm going to roll with Michigan here. Give us Michigan plus six as our third play. And our fourth and final play now, we're going to look at this Georgia Tech versus Louisville game. Currently seeing this as Louisville favored by 10 and a half. Let's dig into this bad boy here. You got Georgia Tech, three and one on the year, also three and one against the spread. Meanwhile, Louisville, two and oh, two and oh against the spread. Something's got to give in this one. You got Georgia Tech looking for their fourth win. They've already played two conference games. They start off with a stunning win against Florida State, winning 24 to 21 in the opener. Although we do have to question, I've mentioned before, how good is Florida State at this point? We have to really wonder. They did have a 31 to 28 road loss against Syracuse. Um, before rebounding with a nice 59-7 to home win against Virginia Military. They did cover that spread, though. Haynes King is their quarterback. Uh, he's a dual-threat guy. The junior has been very good. He's collecting at least 266 yards in three or four games, including 275 yards last week. King has 962 passing yards um, with a 6-1 to touchdown-to-interception rate ratio. So he's been very impressive. Um, and Georgia Tech will, I think, run a lot in this game. And I like their main receiver, Malik Rutherford. You know, he's been a main target for them. The junior wide receiver has made 17 receptions in his last three games and has 285 receiving yards on the season. On the other side, talking about Louisville, they're looking to remain undefeated. They've only played two games, though. They dominated 62-0 to against Austin P in the opener, and then they won 49-14 to against Jacksonville State. A couple of easy games, not very tough. Tyler Schaff is in his first season in the ACC. He spent the last three seasons at Texas Tech. The senior quarterback has been sharp, but again, we have to wonder, well, who is he really doing this against? Louisville has several running backs that they will put in. Um, they kind of split the minutes and split the rushing attack from several guys. Their top receiver is highlighted by Jacoby Brooks. He spent the last three seasons at Alabama. So you know he's been coached up. He has 172 receiving yards on the year. Louisville's offense has averaged 590 total yards in their first two games. But I'm going to keep bringing this up. This is a different level now that Louisville is having to face. And we are going to take Georgia Tech plus 10.5. Georgia Tech has had a tougher schedule to start off the season. They've been challenged by some tougher opponents. We talked about the very good win at least supposedly at the time, against Florida State. I think it's still solid. Um, but Georgia Tech, they have an outstanding quarterback when you talk about Haynes King. Uh, 313 passing yards against Louisville last season. King recorded 266 passing yards in their recent game against Syracuse. While the Cardinals' pass defense has been solid, the group ranked 65th last season. And again, they just really have not been challenged by who they've played. And I think they're going to have a, you know, all they can handle on their hands here with Haynes King for Georgia Tech. So we are going to roll with Georgia Tech plus 10 and a half as our fourth and final play. That's going to wrap it up. Here's a recap on all four of our plays. We're taking Nebraska minus eight and a half. We are going to roll with Kansas plus two, Michigan plus six, and then Georgia Tech. Give us the plus 10 and a half for our four plays for today. Set your notifications. Make sure you guys check out all of our other videos. We do giveaways on pretty much every single video uh, to some extent. We've got our group shows coming out with college football and NFL. And uh, we just posted our WNBA. I know that's coming to an end. But we've got the playoffs coming up as well. And, of course, we do Major League Baseball every single day. Our motto on the show is to bust your bookie. Let's go for the 4-0 sweep in college football week four on Saturday.